you. This is iThoughty from iThoughty.com, bringing you a lesson that I will utilize the Monocopy language. This lesson is about numbers 15, 37 to 41, and I also will be covering Deuteronomy 22 and 12 because this concerns the close. I, I am going to refute Ravenous Bird. Um, he spoke concerning the fringes, um, and he says it's not supposed to go on close, and I'm going to refute it. Um, in this video towards the end, but I'm going to explain utilizing the language, the Manakati language, which comes from hand signs. For those who don't know, Manakati is the language that came before Hebrew. The origins of what you know as Hebrew uh, or Paleo-Hebrew is actually Manakati. Those Paleo-Hebrew symbols are symbols from the Manakati language, which comes from hand sign. The word Manakati means from origin of hand sign. And I prove it in my video, I am iThoughty. Check it out. Just search it on um, iThoughty.com or you can go to any page. You can go, you can get that video also on Manakati.com and Primitive Sign Language.com. Search on YouTube. It's there. And so that, that's the first recommendation of video um, I would um, suggest you check out to understand this information that I'm, I'm able to bring out. And the Manakati language, the beauty of the Manakati language is that since I know the origins and that it comes from hand signs, and I know the hand signs of the symbols, I know how it works, um, I'm able to reveal the truth that other people just can't. And so even if you speak Hebrew and you've learned Paleo-Hebrew from whatever source you learned it from, you don't know the language if you don't know the origins of the symbol, okay? Because sometimes the translators, they got it wrong. If you if you check out, um, I, I, can sh I show you on manakati.com and primitivesignlanguage.com that the translators really don't know um, what they're translating sometimes. Um, but this is not the video to get into that. Um, this video I'm going to talk about numbers 1537 to 41. So unlike a ravenous bird, the guy, the leader from um, guy, the Guybury language, I'm going to explain the law of the fringes over five minutes because I saw his video it was easy to see it was under five minutes and he didn't explain the words he just showed off that he can read the symbols and that's not enough I I don't know why many people are satisfied with him just simply reading it and telling you what it means without any explanation he offers no proof in this video I'm gonna give you proof so let's start off okay we're going to compare the King James translation Okay, and then my translation, and I'm going to explain exactly why I believe this word is this way or that way. Okay, let's read King James, Numbers 15, 37. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisharal, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout the generations, that they may put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember to do all the commandments of Yahweh, and do them that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a horn, that ye may remember to do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. I am Yahweh, your Allah. So I did replace the word the Lord with Yahweh's name because that's really what it should say. King James obviously said the Lord and he used the word God, and he, he said Israel, instead of Yishara, which is the correct way. So, my translation. Now let's look at my literal interpretation. I am doing a literal interpretation instead of a translation. Number one, the word translation has the word trance in it. Okay, many translators put people who read the Bible in a trance. They just um, change the words, and you just assume that they're being faithful to... Um, their interpretation, but they're not. They're really putting you in a trance and a state of confusion. And so I'm doing literal translation, and sometimes it might sign, sound funny um, in the English language, but because it's literal. Um, you, sometimes you can't translate perfectly into a, another language or interpret into another language. And so if I do take the liberty to add a word, I put it in parentheses, but for the most part, everything is is um, interpreted literal let's con let's read and so this video like i said um it is to refute ravenous bird at the end um but my video unlike ravenous bird the leader of guy Barry, 
this video is going to be over five minutes. He made a video about fringes, telling people that they shouldn't put fringes on clothes, um, and it took under five minutes. And my my thing is, he just read it in the Guybury language, and then he just gave his translation, and then that was that. He didn't really prove anything at all. He didn't improve. And so I am going to prove what words mean to, to help you, to teach you. And it's going to take more than five minutes. So if you really want to learn this language, I am going to reveal some very important information that nobody knows today. So I hope I can get your attention because I'm not going on, I'm not basing this information off of Strong's. I'm basing it off of the origins of Hebrew, which is Manakati, which comes from hand sign. So I checked each word to make sure that the hand sign is correct and that the symbols are saying what it's saying. That's why I made this video to reveal some astonishing information today. So humor me and I will explain my interpretation um, and, and also read it to you in the Manakati language. Numbers 1537. Uyi Amar Yawa Al Masha La Amar. Interpreted as, and he said, Yawa to Masha, instruct him to say. And here are the words that I separated for you to see. As you see right here, we have three words, but in the Manakati language, it's one word. There are prefixes here, and he said, Yawa. This word, if you notice the Strong's 30, 68, if you go there in Strong's Concordance, it tells you what it means. However, I, I do not agree. The Manakati language tells us that this word, what this word means. And I made a video, a longer video. If you go to itadi.com, put in the word Yawa, and you can get that video. And in that video, I explain um, how his name is not Ahaya, okay? And so I will refute um, Ravenous Bird's um, explanation of Yatwa's name. And I believe he's wrong. Okay. And I will explain it in another video um, to refute the whole language, um, the whole Gabriel language in general, and the fact that he thinks Yatwa's name is Ya'o. And that's completely wrong. And it's easy to refute. Not going to do it now. I would like you to go check out that video to reference this information. Now, this word. Ao has four meanings, but in this situation, it does mean two. The next word is Masha, which is Moses' name. Now, Moses, he came from water. You know, the Pharaoh's daughter drew him out of water, and that's literally what his name means. If you notice, the Mayim symbol is called the water symbol, and that's why his name has that symbol. And to understand these other symbols, you have to read my book, Primitive Sign Language. The next word is two words. Um, basically, this is a prefix, the Lamed symbol, and it means to or instruct into. Um, and to get more information, you have to read my book. And again, we have the word Amar repeating itself. Verse 38. Dabar al Bani Yisharal u Amarat al Am u Aishu la Am Zitzat. I'll Kanapi bagadi am la dar ratam u natanu ail zidzat a kanap patil takalat. And so this is the reference that you need to see what I just read. Now I'm going to review each one of them. I'm not going to go too much into it. The bar, I've already explained in a video. I showed you that Manakati hand sign. Um, check out my videos to see them. We have al, I've already explained it. Bani, the word ban means son, but it also can mean child. And this word, this symbol here, is a suffix that helps it to be plural. That's why this word means children. Reference it in the Strong's right there. Yishiral, this is the correct way to pronounce Israel, the word Israel, and you could reference it right here. We have three words, actually two words here. Um, this symbol here makes it plural because we're speaking about them. Okay. And so this symbol is also a plural suffix. And so it's saying two. These two symbols means two. And these two symbols create a plural form. I'm sorry, making it messy. I'm just trying to explain it. I'll try to better circles. Um, this symbol means and. And then this word right here, oops, 
is um, the word that is communicating make. And this is like, you could say, it activates the word. Um, it actually connects it to them because this is a connecting symbol. Most people don't know that. Um, and it says to them. Now, these two symbols together, the last two symbols, here, it, it does communicate them. But in the interpretation, it's actually you plural. It sounds better saying you um, when you interpret it, but it communicates them. Um, so you, you, you just have to understand that when you say you in English, sometimes you communicates plural. And so that's how English language works. So that's the breakdown. Nobody refutes this. Um, except for, let's see. Oh yeah. So, so far we're good. Nobody is going to disagree with my interpretation. Let's continue. Now let's look at, um, some more words in this verse. We have Zitzat. The word Zitzat, people will um, actually um, disagree, number one, with the way I'm saying it, number two, with what it means. But I'm going to prove it in this video um, and then come back to the rest. So let's continue. Now let's look at the word Zitzat before we continue with the verse that we're on. The word Zitzat, some people will refute me and say that. Um, you know, it doesn't mean what it means and I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I'm utilizing the Manakati language to prove exactly what this word means. So we have the first symbol. This symbol is called the Sud symbol. Okay. And the Sud symbol means side. Okay. But I'm going to do a demonstration that's different. And this demonstration, I'm going to turn it just to show you what this word is communicating. So this is the word on, you see on the top here. And just for demonstration, I'm flipping it. And then we, next we have the yid symbol. I'm going to put it next to it for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to put the third sud symbol next to it. And as you see in this demonstration, we have two of the sud symbols on each side of this word. And then this symbol in the middle is called the hand. And so the hand is actually holding something on each side. And this is the purpose of the yid symbol. In, in the middle of the two sad symbol. It's telling you to grab it on each side using your hand. And so this is a demonstration on how to tie, um, to make a fringe, to make a zidzat. And so the next symbol is the two symbol. The two symbol is this X looking um, letter that you see here. And the two symbol, I'm gonna do a, another presentation is you take the two symbols um, the two threads, basically it's telling you to grab two threads on each side and then you cross it over using your hand. So this symbol is communicating how to tie your zitza. And I'm going to show you a demonstration, a literal demonstration at the end of this video. So please humor me, but let's continue. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures what the word zitza means. So I'm just going to prove it, you know, Prove so much so you can understand, and then I will demonstrate it at the end. And so examples in the scriptures, let's look at Ezekiel 8 and 3, because Ezekiel 8 and 3 uses the word zitzat in a different way. So because I want to show you what the word zitzat means. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a zitzat of mine head. And this was translated as lock. And so this is Ezekiel speaking, and he had a zitzat on his head. So he had a braid. A braid or a lock, you know, what they call dread, is a zitzat. I actually think it was braid, not so much um, a dreadlock. I think it was a braid. Okay, I really do, because the word zitzat is communicating this, um, this coming together to create an X in your hair. And if you notice, these braids, they have like, you know, they're coming together and, you know, it's a knot. Okay. So let's continue with verse 38. We have um, more words to look at. And so the next word is aisle. This symbol, these two symbols together communicates on. And I don't need to break it down. It's right here in Strong's and nobody, re nobody disagrees. It means on. The next word is kanapi. Kanapi. Okay. And it's, it's actually two words. 
um, this symbol right here, the suffix, the Z symbol, and it's communicating of. So let's look at that. So let's look at the word kanap. Kanap is in Strong's 3671. And when you check it out, you'll see that kanap means wing, extremities, edge, hem, and border um, or skirt. It does not mean corner, which I will um, further explain. If you read 1 Samuel 15 and 26, we get an idea that uh, how it's used to mean skirt. Verse 26, and Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, and Yahweh hath rejected thee from being king over Yisrael. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the kanap of his mantle, and it rent. So the kanap was his skirt. This was translated as skirt. The next is Isaiah, I mean, 1 Samuel 24, verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which Yahuwah said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him um, as it seemed good unto thee. Then David arose and cut the kanap um, skirt of Saul's um, robe privily. And it came to pass afterward, David's heart smote him because he cut off Saul's kanap, his skirt. And so both of these verses is letting you know that you can have a kanap on your skirt so the word kanap does not mean corner okay it means it means the hem the extremity or the skirt basically the bottom the far bottom and these symbols are communicating the far bottom it's communicating wing but how is it related to the Manakati language well the Manakati language is telling you is demonstrating using hand signs and I've already done this video so I'm going to play that video and this is the video I'm going to play it. Manakati language is the language of the world. The next Manakati word that I'm going to hand sign is the word wing. The word wing is spelled like this. This is the kanak. The word wing also communicates extremity. I'm going to sign for you the word wing. Ka. Na. I'm going to do it again. Ka. Nah. If you notice my hand gesture, just reference the outer, the outer areas of a bird, the wing, the extremities. I outline with my hands the extremities. It's like I'm drawing a bird. The ka symbol is palm. As you notice, I go down. The noon symbol comes up and then I open with the paw symbol. These symbols told me to do what you saw. You can't refute it. This is the hand gesture of Kanan. Okay, and so the video just demonstrated you that Kanan means wing, but it also means the edges, okay, the border. And it's also translate, translated or interpreted as skirt, okay? And so whenever it's used to mean corner, they are mistranslating it. It actually means north, south, east, and west. The, the word for corner um, in Manakati, it's, it actually is like saying the four extremities. The four extremities just means north, south, and east, and west. west. It's the four ends, basically. The, I mean, I would translate it as four ends instead of corner because cannot the symbols are not communicating corner, okay? And and the vast majority of the scriptures agree, okay? Check out Isaiah 24 and 16. The word edge is the word cannot. And so you cannot communicate corner and edge at the same time. The hand sign does not communicate corner, and that's the point. So let's continue. Um, the next word is bagadi am. Now, bagad is the key word. It's the root word, and it means garment. It doesn't mean covering. It means garment. And here is bagad in Strong's 899. If you notice in the scriptures, if you check it out on your own, and if you see Strong's, it says garment, raiment, clothes, apparel. Um, this is what bagad means. It does not mean covering. 
Should anyone tell you that, hint, hint, ravenous bird's going to tell you this, they're lying, okay? This scripture is speaking about clothes, putting zitzat on your clothes, not on your covering, because bagad is the key word. It does not mean covering. Okay, the next words are self-explanatory. Um, you see, um, no one refutes it. I've already explained zitzat. And then lastly, um, we already explained um, kanap, Strong's 3671. The next one that we're going to explain is patil, meaning ribbon and cord. I'm going to prove it in the next slide. Okay, so the next word is patil, and it is Strong's 6616. We're going to watch this video, um, but check it out in Strong's, and you could reference it in the scriptures. And if you see, the word has been translated um, or interpreted as cord many times. Um, but it can mean thread. And this video I made that we're going to watch a little clip to show you the hand sign. I already did the hand sign. Um, I think I mentioned the different strongs, and, and I believe that that's wrong. Um, it, it's strong 6616. Let's watch the video. Short clip. Let me look at the word to see how we sign it. Okay. Patil. Okay. Patil is signed like this. Patil means cord. Okay, um, cord, thread. So if you notice, I did a two symbol because the two symbol is in the word patil. Patil is strong, 6671, okay? The yid symbol is the hand, okay? And the lamet symbol goes out, okay? Now, the pa symbol is two. It, use, it, 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 communi it usually when you see the pa symbol, the pa symbol sometimes like this is signed, sometimes like this. But sometimes the possible is telling you to use two hands. So the word patil, which I'm going to write right here, okay, patil, pa, deal. This word patil is telling me how to do the hand sign, okay? And the hand sign is communicating to you what patil is. Okay, it's like if I had a long thread right now, I'd probably have to do that, right? If I had a long piece of cord, and so for me to communicate that to you, that's what I have to do. So patil is a long cord, and so the cord goes this way, and where and on the hem of our clothes, the cord goes this way. So we have direction. the The word patil shows us a direction. But it also shows us um, what the word is. It's a thread. It's a cord. You can put the cord any which way. But it, but the instruction was for us to have the the patil, which is the cord, on the hem of our garment, and then the zitzat. Okay, the zitzat is 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 coming off of it. Let me see. There is a picture of an ancient Hebrew Israelites that wore fringes when they were in captivity. Okay, and this picture is on my website. I will. See about putting it. I'll put it in this link, I think. I'll try to put it in this link. We're almost done. So this is the picture of pot. Oh, look at that. Um, you see the Israelites wearing um, the fringes, the zitzats, actually. And you see the border, the border right here. And so this is a Israelite garment. This is not a Babylonian garment. This is a, they dress in differently. And so just because the Babylonians wore fringes doesn't mean that the Israelites the children of Yisrael didn't wear fringes. That's the most absurd thing Let me look at the that I heard okay. people, um, you know, make a, that assumption. There's many pictures of us wearing fringes, and you can see the borders in the fringes. You can see the patil. Okay, let's continue. So the next word we already did the word patil is takalat. Now, Thakalat is Strong's 8504. And I actually did a video not too long ago. It could have been three weeks ago. Check out the Hebrew Garments page um, or Hebrew or basically ithadi.com and you can get the video. 15 reasons why the color of um, the, the patil cord is violet and not blue. So that video, I'm giving you over 15 reasons um, to prove it being violet 
But guess what? Strong's Concordance says it's violet. So the word Thakalat is Strong's 8504. And one of the reasons is check out Strong's and the history. And check out that video, the 15 reasons for you to get more confirmation if you, um, if you need. 15 verse 39. U a ya la kam la zizat u ra i tam atu u zakaratam at kal ma suat. And this is the interpretation word for word. The first word is two words and it's communicating and be. And as you see, the Strong's Concordance, nobody disagrees. The next word is for you. And this is a prefix and a suffix, no Strong's is available. I've already explained, this is the word zitzat. The next word is look, and look. So there's two words, but it's a plural because it's communicating um, um, the children of Israel, which is plural. And so the Strong's are right there. I'm not going to... I believe I showed the hand sign in a different video, so you can check out my video somewhere. It's there. Atu. Um, and, and remember them. I did review the word zakar in the video, I am Aitari. The word zakar is Strong's 2142. And check out the video, I am Aitari. If you want to see the demonstration of the word zakar, not going to review it in this video. At. At um, is usually not translated in the in the English Bibles because it's redundant and it's 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 not translated but for the most part it means mark or look um, it's telling you um, to check check out the following words so basically check out all the the commandments um, matsuat um, is the word commandment but I translate it as charges which I am going to explain right now Oh, and um, I wanted you to take a look at um, the King's James Version. Just note that um, when they translate, they said, and for a fringe, that you may look upon um, it. But it actually says, and look upon it. And so little slight variations in translations and versus little translation. And that's why I said, and look um, um, them and remember them. So I just wanted you to note that the King James was a little bit different. The word translated as commandment is the word matsua, and it's Strong's 3687. The root word is the word su. This word right here, su. This is the root word. And the word su means, was translated as command, but I believe it means charge. And I'm going to flip over the, the sad symbol for this demonstration. The sad symbol right here is flipped because I'm showing you a connection. When Yah sends out um, a command, he is connecting this connecting symbol. He is branching out and he's connecting it to somebody, um, to someone. Okay, and so this is what the word "su" is communicating. Anybody can can give somebody a command, but they're not going to listen if they don't have an agreement to listen. You can tell a stranger to do something, but it doesn't mean they're going to listen. Okay, you can only um, give somebody a charge if they have a covenant or an agreement to listen to you. And that would be called a charge. I believe that the word matsua is a charge and not um, a command. So I know it's been translated as commandments and it's what we understand. But if you don't have a covenant with Yah, are you going to keep his commandment? You might, you probably won't keep his commandment because he didn't give it to you. You know, he's not commanding people he didn't have a covenant. He's commanding the Israelites whom he has a covenant with. Now, later on, everybody's going to worship and, and obey him. Um, but for now, he is, he, Yah is punishing only his children, the Israelites, when they don't listen to him because we have a covenant with him. So this is basically like a chain of command. If you notice the sud symbol, right here it looks like it's branching out okay 
And that's why this word forms the word charge because he's branching out a voice command, okay? And matsua is the official word for charge and it's to impose a duty or responsibility. The tu symbol in the word zitzat connects. If you notice, the word zitzat has the the sod symbol in it two times because you're taking um, Yahweh's command um, or his charge and you're locking it in. So this symbol, this two symbol, you could say is a lock. It's symbolic, okay? It's symbolic for you to uh, for you to receive the the commandments from Yah, and that's why Yah said to put it on the borders of your garment. Reading from the next part of verse 39. Ya'wa u aishitam atam u la tataru akari labab kam u akari. Now, this is the word for word breakdown and the strongs under it. And all these words, nobody disagrees the meaning, so I am going to move on. Um, check out the strongs on your own and confirm the, the meaning of the words. Verse 40. La ma'ain ta zakaru u aishitam at kal ma su a ti u a yi itam. Interpretation. For the purpose of remembering and do them and mark all charges and be set apart to all of you. And this is a word for word interpretation of what I just read. And nobody disagrees with the meaning of these words, so I am going to move on. Reading from the next part of verse 40 Kudashim la ali kam. Now, what I just read, this is the word for word breakdown. Kudashim means um, set apart, plural, referencing the Israelites. La um, is the prefix that means to, right here. And then we have Allah, which is translated as God. Okay, Allah. Um, this is the symbol that means of. And this means you, plural. So the Mayim symbols, plural. And so if you don't know the meaning of the symbols, you're not going to be able to break down and confirm the meaning of this word. And so this is what I teach. And this is what makes me um, set apart from everybody else. I am teaching you, number one, the origins of the symbols and their hand sign, their attributes of the hand signs. And then I'm teaching you how it's utilized in words. Even if you haven't read my book, I do these videos all the time, you're going to learn. I'm not going to just tell you what a word means without proving it to you. This is what makes me different from everybody else. But let's look at verse 40. For the reason you remember and do them and mark all charges and be set apart to Allah of you. Why did Yah say that? He's telling you why he wants you to tie zitzats on your clothes. For you to remember, look at this image of this finger, of um, a knot being tied on the finger. Where did people come up with this? This symbolizes having something to remember. We as humans, we understand what it means to tie knots on something. Where did this come from? Where did this come from? Nobody knows. I, I searched and I haven't found the origins of this, except for in the scriptures of Numbers 15 and 40, 15, 37, verse to 41. The scriptures where Yah is telling us to tie knots on our clothes for us to remember the commandments. There's a reason for this. And the reason is Yah has made us um, have a, a special ability to remember things if we tie knots. Tie knots is a way to remember. And Yah is utilizing the zitzats on our clothes to help us remember the commandments. And so this is a special revelation that I'm bringing to you today.
verse 41. Ani yawa, Allah i kam ashar, au saati, at kam ma arat matsarin, la a i ut, la kam, la ala im, ani yawa, Allah i kam. And this is the interpretation. Nobody disagrees. It says, I, Yahwa, Allah of you, that that who brought you from the land of Egypt to be for you an almighty. I am Yahwa, almighty of you. Literal translation, for the most part, um, everybody agrees. Now let's look at Deuteronomy 22, verse 12. We're done with Numbers 15. You understand? that the zitzatz goes on the hem, the kanap of your garments, which is bagad, um, and then the borders of violet, which is takalat, is violet, goes on top of the zitzatz, okay? And you know the zitzatz are supposed to have a crossover, which I am going to de demonstrate shortly. But let's look at Deuteronomy 22, verse 12, because this confuses people. Thou shalt make thee, this is King James, thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou covers thyself. Well, the King James mistranslated it. It doesn't say that. Let's go into my literal interpretation. Gadalin, you make for you on four kanaput covering, which you cover in it. This verse is not speaking about clothes. It's telling you that to make a gadalim um, for your covering, basically like a blanket. It's, it's not speaking about clothes. It's not telling you to put zitzats on it. Gadalim is not zitzats. It's not fringes. Now, I know when you go to Strong's 1433, they tell you it's fringes. But gadal means great magnify greatness it, it, it has to do with increasing and and greatness okay that's what gadal has to do with gadalin hardly happens in the scriptures and when it does only one time it's translated as tassel and that's in this verse deuteronomy 22 verse 12. now i be an aitari knowing the origins of the language i'm telling you right now Gadal has no hand sign demonstrating a fringe. I'm telling you not to believe it. Strong concordance has not enough evidence to confirm that it means fringe. I believe they're guessing and there's no proof other than this one verse here and they just assume it. They're making assumptions which you should be scared of. Number one, they translated the word, um, which word is it? Kasu. Kasut, kasut as vesture. And kasut is actually a word um, that just means cover, okay? And so it's really concerning. It's really concerning that they translate it as vesture in the King James, and it does mean covering. So this, this scripture, if gadalim does not mean um, tassels, then what is it telling us? That's the question. Well, this is going to be a continual research because gadalim does mean greatness. It's saying to make a greatness. We're supposed to make something great. I'm thinking it's the cover that's supposed to be great, but you know what? I'm going to leave this for Yah to reveal his truth um, down the road whenever he feels like revealing it because gadalim hardly appears in the scripture, but I know for sure it's not talking about a tassel. If you want to believe it's a tassel, Go right ahead. But me, I thought he, I know the orange of the symbols. There is no hand sign communicating a tassel. And Strong's lied. There's only one verse, and it's this verse, and it's incomplete. This is not talking about clothes. And so this is what's been confusing people. There's confusion because you're trusting Strong's too much. Now, let's go into it a little bit further. I want to show you that the word for covering in Deuteronomy 22 verse 12 is 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 actually covering and it's not a, a vesture like King James wants us to believe okay and because it's also in Exodus 22 21 verse 10 and it's in this verse interestingly Exodus 21 verse 10 it says 
if another if another he take to him this is speaking of a man if he takes another wife her flesh and her kasut and her ainata don't he reduce the reason i kept the word her ainata is that that word is also mistranslated when a man takes a wife he's not supposed to reduce the things that the first wife has. The scripture does say flesh, and the word flesh can can communicate king kingship. You're not supposed to take the woman's kingship. It could be communicating flesh as an animal, but I'm very suspicious that it's talking about her food. I'm suspicious about the whole translation of Exodus 21, verse 10. Um, the only word they got right was covering. Um, but sometimes they translate it as cohabitation. And so we're being lied to in the scriptures. We're being deceived. The word we definitely know, kasu'ut, um, is a covering. Okay, and it appears twice. One in Deuteronomy, I mean, it appears more than twice. It's definitely covering. Let's look at it um, right here in the scriptures. It looks like it's um, Strong's 3680, and as you see, um, Deuteronomy 22 verse 12 is, is here on the right. This is the image of Strong's, and you know they say cover because it is cover. It's not um, in verse. Look in the middle right here. So this is the commentary portion of my video of Ravenous Bird, the leader of Gaibari, the one who invented the Gaibari language, who claims it's the original language, but doesn't so much prove it. Um, this is him saying it. And so in this video, which is under five minutes, he basically, he reads Numbers 15, 38 um, to 41 in Gaibari. Then he goes right into this translation. So right here, you're seeing his translation, but you know, he's done reading it at this point. I'm skipping through. Now he's going to go into Deuteronomy 22, verse 12. Let's start from there. Gadalim Vaishalacha, Ra Arabai, Hanapoth, Kasothcha, Ashata, Hasa, Baha. Fringes will you make to you upon the four wings of your covering, which you cover in it. So you see, this is what he did with Numbers um, 15, 30, 38 to 41. He read it in his language, and then he just throws a translation on the screen, and, you know, you're just going to have to believe him because he's not going to break it down, and he's going to continue from here. Trying to play. Oh, there you go. The garment must have four wings or sides and only four. Okay. Based on Deuteronomy 22 and 12, he believes that this cloth or this towel or this blanket looking thing is the garment. He's he's combining the scriptures, Deuteronomy 15 and De I mean Deuteronomy 22 and Numbers 15. But remember, I opened your eyes. I told you bagad means garment. And in um, Deuteronomy 22, the word bagad is not there. The word for cover is there. So um, he's right in the fact that um, Deuteronomy 22 is a cover, but it's not a garment. A garment is not a cover. A cover is a cover. A garment is a garment. And so now he's telling you that this image on the left is a heathen and invalid, which it is. He's showing you a picture of a confirmed Babylonian. So obviously it's a... He's a heathen, and I don't want to call it heathen. That's that's the King James translation. I would call him. He's another nation, and that's their garment. So okay, it's that's their garment. If it has more than four, it is not valid. The fringes are braided tassels. Fringes are braided tassel, and I do agree. And um, I don't believe I use I. What is it? I, I S U. I, I, whatever, whatever this group is called. Um, I don't believe in their the way they do their garments, only because they use. They, they, they're very heavy on the polyester and they use polyester fringes on top of cotton, you know, American t-shirts and they have the wrong borders. However, they are putting it on a garment. It is supposed to go on a garment as you read in Numbers 15. And he's crossing it because he thinks it shouldn't go on a, a, an actual shirt garment. It should go on a towel basically or a blanket. Along the edges of the four wings. This is the funny part. This is my garment that you're seeing right here. This cotton and linen, this is what I make. 
I make, you know, set apart apparel, long or short, and then I put zidzats on the end of it with borders of violet. And he's saying that this is a heathen apparel. Number one, I'm not a heathen, and this is actually a garment. His image on the right is not a garment. I, I want you to notice that he's using craftiness. I would I would dare say he's using witchcraft and deception because he's he's telling you that he's using Deuteronomy 22 to deceive you and to think that this image on the right is a garment. But you know better. You can't walk out the house with a towel, can you? At the bottom of each fringe is a thread of blue which ties off the fringe and binds it. This band... Okay, let's stop right there. You You heard the breakdown. I showed you the word for word original language breakdown. Nowhere did it say that the blue, um, the blue or the color is supposed to tie off the fringe. This is his addition. He added to the word. I mean, it doesn't even look, it doesn't even look that good. There's nothing in history that you can look back and see evidence of this. I showed you the garments of the Israelites in the past, and you could see the borders in the stone. You can't see the color, but you could see that there is a border on the top of the fringe, you know, right on the kanap, okay, right on the extremity. But, you know, it's not tying off anything, so he has no evidence of then him saying it's this. The scripture doesn't say it. The evidence in, you know, the historical evidence doesn't say it. So he's just lying to you, basically. You need to see right through it. There's no scripture that he can prove that the, uh, that the color, Thakala, is supposed to tie off anything. The blue is the only color the linen garment has. It doesn't say in scripture that the linen garment can't be a different color. It doesn't say only be this color. This is him saying it. Doesn't say it. And it's supposed to draw your eye's attention. Each fringe. Now, the color is going to draw your attention. It's true. Um, but the attention is supposed to be the zitzats because it's supposed to remind you of the commandments. Represents a law stated by Masha in the Torah. So you need to determine exactly how many laws there are in order to determine the number of fringes your four wind garment must have. That's lying. He's lying. Nowhere does it says for you to count the laws in the scriptures before you can make yourself a garment. It doesn't say that. It does say that the, the zitzats do represent the commandments. It's true. Okay. But if I were to categorize the law of murder, I could count it as one, one law. But there are sub laws of murder. Well, someone else could count it as more than one law. They could count it as 10 laws because there's different, um, you know, scenarios of murder, you know, and different rules. And so, because for example, there's accidental murder, there's, there's the, there's the killing where if someone kills your, your near kin, you can go kill them. That's not necessarily murder. And so it all depends on how you categorize it. And so does that mean I'm wrong and the other person's right or the other person's right and I'm wrong? No, it means it's a different way of counting the laws and nowhere in scripture says to do that. He's giving you a burden. He's adding to the scriptures and that's illegal. So imagine someone making a thousand um, zitzats on a on a towel garment. You think that they're going to do that again? That's too much work. They're likely not going to do that again, and it's a burden. What if someone doesn't finish it? You know, then they feel like you know they're not really keeping the commandments. And are you going to really walk around with a towel all day long? It's not a garment. You need to see right through it. And if you don't, you know, you're following man. Is what you're doing. And there are way more than six hundred and thirteen laws. In the Torah, 613 is a Jewish number based on Jewish mysticism. It has no basis in the biblical text. This is his opinion. Lastly, he
This is a learning garment I did a few months ago, okay? And this is how I used to do the fringes. I used to pull the thread out and then I would go like this and I would see that X right there? It created an X and then I would not. But the understanding that you can see today um, that I showed you about the word um, for commandment, which is ma su a, um, it really shouldn't be that way. So I, am, I untied this one. This is a single knot, and this is a knot with a couple of X's on it. So basically, this is Yah's command. The, this, this, this portion represents Yah's command, and this would represent me, okay? And so we're going to connect it with the X according to what you saw um, in the monocropy language. And so the cross over, there's the X. Now, it's not going to stay, so I would need to go like this. And I believe, according to the scriptures, that each and every one of us needs to do our own zitzats. When we do it, we need to recite a commandment, and then we lock it in. See that? If I did this, I would think of a commandment and lock it in. And the next one, go to the next commandment, Yah's command, me, and then I tie it, and then I do a loop again, and then I knot it in. Okay, so I believe that we definitely need to have two strands in our hands and cross it over, okay, according to the symbols, a crossover. And then it won't stay, so you do have to do a knot, but it, essentially it kind of looks the same. If you can zoom in closer, zoom in closer. This is the one I did with um, a cross and then a knot. This is the one I did with just a knot. You notice it's really hard to distinguish but I did do a cross right here, um, kind of like a braid, but you know, a braid won't stay. Uh, perhaps, although the braid is three strands, the typical braid is three strands, I don't, I don't see the three strand braid um, symbolizing connection. I really believe that it's supposed to be the cross, you know, like the two symbol, a cross over, and then we should knot it so it could stay. And so this right here, is, as long as you recite a commandment and you remember commandment, this one, fringe, um, the way I did it, symbolizes the commandment. So we need to do our own fringes. We definitely need to do our own fringes and to connect it with keeping the commandments because this is supposed to symbolize keeping the commandments. If I do the fringes for you, you did not um, memorize the commandments. So this is to help you memorize the commandments. It makes more sense now. Okay, so you see this video that I presented and the the reference of the knot on the finger, it, we as humans, we understand that this means to remember something. Where did it come from? I believe Yah programmed us to remember things utilizing knots. Knots helps us to remember. I don't know why, but this is the case when it comes to um, putting zitzats on our clothes. It's to help us remember. But we definitely should do it ourselves. It, you know, the commandment was to... For, for Moses to tell the Israelites to make them, for themselves, um, zitzats on the border of their garments. And it's the purpose is for us to remember. It says the purpose is for us to remember. So someone else can't do the knots for you for you to remember. If I tie a knot in your finger and you don't know why I did it, is it going to help you remember something that I want you to do? No. In order for you to remember something that I want you to do, you're going to have to tie the knot yourself and and for it to be significant i believe that this will um help us to keep our focus and give us something to do that you know it's more connected with keeping the commandments so then when we look down we know exactly what law we're thinking of because when we untie that knot on our clothes we recited a law now you're not going to be able to put all the laws on one garment but as you recite it laws you might have to have different commandments on different garments you know to help you to learn it and we need more than one outfit right this is a great exercise it's a great exercise for us to keep the commandments um on us and for those who feel the need not to wear zitzats you know you're not going to remember the commandments as much you know this is not going to hurt us to do this and it's it's a good exercise now for those who bought cotton fringes on my website um, I have something you can do 
um, to do your knots. So I'm going to continue to sell my garments when I make it, when I feel like making it, um, the cotton ones, bullion fringes. And when I do, I'm going to show you a method where you can tie your zizat. Because as long as I put the threads there, you can easily tie it. And I'm going to demonstrate it next. So this is a typical um, cotton outfit that I usually do. Now, I, the reason I chose the, um, the bullions for the cotton is that it lasts longer and it's neater. And it does do an X. The bullion fringes, it crosses itself over. So if you notice the cross over and so the crossover, it kind of twists. But the understanding that we have with the scriptures today that we learned that Yah revealed, um, it's better not to have it bullion, bullion. And bullion is something that, uh, that quite frankly, it, it's, it's not really a tie. So I would like you to do it this way. I think this is a great method. If you already bought my, my garment, um, the cotton garment of these, I would still continue to sell these bullion fringes because you can do this. This is what you can do. Let's say I just made this outfit for you and I put bullion fringes. I'm making it convenient for you to tie the fringes. I would cut off the end, just the end to open it up. Okay? Just the end, just to open it up. And this allows you to have the ability to just quickly untwist it. Okay? So, this is a typical um, cotton outfit that I usually do. Now, I, the reason I chose the, um, the bullions for the cotton is that it lasts longer and it's neater. And it does do an X. The bullion fringes, it crosses itself over. So, if you notice the cross over. And so, the cross over, it kind of twists. But the understanding that we have with the scriptures today that we learned, that Yah revealed, um, it's better not to have it bullion. bullion and bullion is something that... a uh, that quite frankly, it, it's it's not really a tie. So I would like you to do it this way. I think this is a great method. If you already bought my my garment, um, the cotton garment of these, I would still continue to sell these bullion fringes because you can do this. This is what you can do. Let's say I just made this outfit for you and I put bullion fringes. I'm making it convenient for you to tie the fringes. I would cut off the end, just the end to open it up. Okay, just the end, just to open it up. And this allows you to have the ability to just quickly untwist it. Okay? Now, how do we spell zitzatz? Well, you have one on the side and one on the other side. So you have the sad symbol on each side, and the yid symbol represents your hand. And your hand crosses over. See that? The crossover. I noticed that with the cotton fringes, it does kind of stay. That one cross it stays. I could do another cross. And you don't even need to do the knot. It does stay. So I memorize a commandment. Thou shall not murder. And this signifies thou shall not murder. It stays. And so look at it. The bullion fringes. Um, is
So thank you for watching this video of Numbers 15, 37, 41, and the explanation of Deuteronomy 22, verse 12. I hope you get a good understanding. So support me on Patreon, um, patreon.com backslash Batya, and don't forget to download a copy of um, the language and in the interpretation that you saw on the screen. Um, my Patreon supporters help me to make these videos, you know, and so show your support. If you believe that I'm a servant of Yah and that you want to see more videos like this, show your support because I can't continue to make it without your support. Um, eventually, you know, I might have to just really reduce the number of videos that I'm putting out. So if you want this, um, the information, you believe I'm a servant of Yah, you know, don't rob Yah because Yah doesn't need money. It's his servants that need money to put out this information. Okay, so shalom and yeah, grant you peace.